Hi there, Doug Stewart with IT Creations. I know you've probably all heard about the second generation Intel Xeon scalable processors that offer more cores, support faster and more memory. So what does this mean for your 10th generation HP Z8 or Z6 G4 workstation with that first generation Intel Xeon scalable processor? Can you upgrade it to accept the new processor? And what kind of performance improvements are we talking about? In a word, yes. And on that performance part, we'll get to that. Let's do it. First off, how do you tell the difference between the two processors? That's the easy part. Just look for a number two after the first digit. That tells you it's a second generation CPU. I'm not sure why the manufacturers are not making more of a fuss out of this new processor. You get more cores with similar model numbers and all that at the same price point, basically. And an improved clock speed with a core count plus increased memory capacity and speed. Memory speed on Gen 2 processors now clocks in at 2933 megahertz instead of just a paltry 2666 megahertz. They now support 256 gigabyte memory modules, including those Optane DC persistent memory modules. But that's another video. There's also a new quad CPU packaging into a half-width dual socket Intel Xeon Platinum 9200 series processor. Not even sure what that means, although what I did get from that is there's a new scalable processor, the Xeon Platinum 9200 series. The Gen 1 CPUs topped out at the 8100 Platinum series, and now there's a new double-plated Platinum processor or some Anyways, the quad CPU packaging, half-width dual socket thing, got me thinking, so I did a little research. The Platinum 9200 series supports up to 56 cores and 112 threads per processor. This is also the CPU they compared to the previous king of the hill, the Platinum 8180. However, don't get too excited by the new 56 core version because from my understanding, you have to purchase the system with the processor because it's integrated with the system board. So that kind of sucks. Oh, and the big performance numbers you see are comparing the top processors to 8180 against the 9200 series. That said, the new Gen 2 processors are filling in the gaps to support a greater diversity of workloads. There are definitely some interesting additions, including one with an L suffix that indicates the CPU supports like 4.5 terabytes. Just down from that, the new M or medium processor now supports up to two terabytes of memory per processor, whereas the Gen 1 M processor supported up to 1.5 terabytes. Let's move on. This is our Z8 G4 we use for editing and rendering our videos. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, a 1080 Ti GPU, and a first generation gold 5122 CPU with four cores. We have a Gen 2 Gold 5222 CPU that shares many of the same characteristics as the first Gen 5122, and it also supports four cores, but has a slightly faster clock speed at 3.8 GHz compared to 3.6 GHz. We're going to take a few benchmarks, then switch it out for the Gen 2 Gold 5222 and compare the results. First things first, let's grab a processor. And hopefully after we're done with this, the Z8 will still work. By the way, the BIOS update is not just for the Gen 2 CPUs, but first generation CPUs are still supported on the new BIOS. The install seems pretty straightforward, and there are two ways to do this. Well, maybe three. You can download the file to the system you want to update, in this case our Z8G4, or download the program on a separate computer and place the update on a USB drive, which is the procedure outlined by HP and the procedure that we're going to be following. We have to download the BIOS package, which includes some flash utilities and other PDFs and such. Oh, and they do recommend reading the release notes. Done. Insert a USB stick and execute the soft pack by double clicking on the icon to unpack the items. Oh, and the unpacking part actually looks like something is being installed, which I did find somewhat troubling when I did it on my other manufacturer named system. Anyways, once the file is unpacked, it appears in this directory. You can either select the copy function from the soft pack graphic user interface or GUI, or find the binary BIOS file, this one, on your C drive. By the way, there are actually quite a few items in the folder. Open this folder and there are two executable files. We're going to use the one with a 64 on the end for a 64-bit operating system, this one, and copy that one to the directory we created on the USB stick per HP's instruction. Insert the USB key and reboot or boot the system to the startup menu by pressing escape during post before the OS loads. This will get you to the BIOS GUI where you will use the arrow keys to select the flash system BIOS. Once selected, just follow the steps to update the BIOS. Okay, the update has been installed and we had a slight glitch with the display performance that ironed itself out after about a minute. So we already ran benchmarks for the previous 5122 CPU, which I might add that running our recording application at the same time did kind of drop the numbers a little bit, but we used it for both, so pretty much same same. And these are the results. As expected, the 5222 CPU is faster, but not dramatically. By the numbers, it provided about a 5.4% increase in performance. One more thing, just for the hell of it, we also installed some of the faster memory modules at 2933 MHz to see if there was any appreciable difference in the tests. Nope. And then we installed four times more memory with pretty much negligible results. 
Bottom line, yes, we did get a statistically significant 5% increase in performance with the Gen 2 CPUs. Was it worth it? <laughs> Probably not. But that said, I was trying to see the difference between two CPUs that support almost the same specs. Clock speed is just a hair faster on the Gen 2 processors, but our 5222 also supports one terabyte of memory instead of just the 768 gigabytes on the Gen 1, unless you have the M processors. If this was a new system, I would offer the Gen 2 CPUs. Although for our noticeable upgrade on our Z8, I would choose a different processor. The interesting part is the cost for these new CPUs is very comparable to the Gen 1 family, so not a huge difference in cost for some definite performance and capacity gains. IT Creations has the Gen 2 scalable Xeons in stock, so drop by if you're looking for a great deal. If you have any questions on the Gen 2 processors, post them in the comments section below. Like, subscribe, and comment. I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.